Hey guys, Cody Adair here, I'm with Jason Merkel, and today we have a really awesome announcement. Well, yeah. yesterday was the announcement, we have a really cool product that we're bringing out to the market, guys, and that's the E-Flight Twin Otter 1.2 meter. Yep, so uh, Cody's gonna, he's got his laptop here, and we are currently live on Facebook. He's gonna share this to a couple other channels. You guys might be seeing this later on YouTube. Again, don't be alarmed. If you see him on the computer, that's because he's gonna be looking at some of the comments and questions that come from uh, the live viewing audience. Uh, so yeah, we're very excited to show you guys our last new release of 2019. Uh, it's only a couple weeks before the end of the year, uh, and we're really excited about this one, kind of ending the year with this one, because it's something pretty unique, but also I think very desirable for a lot of people and a lot of ways. So uh, for those that haven't seen it yet, this is the uh, Twin Otter 1.2 meter, so 1.2 meter wingspan. Uh, it does have floats, it comes with the floats, so I'll point that out here from the get-go. Uh, and Then we'll get into some of the other details here. But what's really exciting about this airplane is that it is a, a size and uh, it's easy to fly and it, I think it can, it can work well for a lot of guys. So even if a person's never flown a twin aircraft before, maybe a person's only flown a trainer and maybe one other airplane and they're looking for something a little bit unique uh, to move into next, this airplane can appeal all the way from that, that lower time pilot all the way up to very, very experienced pilots. A lot of the guys around the office that are really phenomenal pilots have been flying a really long time about having a ball with this thing. Uh, they say it just looks good, it flies good, it sounds good because it's a twin. It's just got a lot going for it. And then on top of that, it's a phenomenal value, which I think is something that a lot of people have pointed out. And I'll speak to that really quick. We tried to make this the size to get us to that value. Right. Uh, so if we had made it bigger, some guys have said, oh, you guys missed the mark. You should have made it 1.5 meter or, or, or two meter carbon Z size or whatever it is. The catch there is the price goes up substantially. Right. So Neil, for example, if we had made this a 1.5 meter wingspan airplane, it would have cost about 50% more. Right. And then that would have put it around $300 or more. And then that would have made it less desirable for a larger audience. Right. And so our goal here was to provide a great first twin, something that's sized, so you can easily transport it without taking it apart. This thing is the perfect size to fit in a trunk, to fit in a back seat, to potentially even fit in a front seat with the wing on it. Now that said, it's very easy to take the wing off. There's just one thumb screw here, guys, that's yep. it. One thumb screw, you can pop the wing off. Of course, you have to disconnect all the, the servo leads in there between. Right. Uh, there are some struts here, they pop in and pop out. Yeah, super simple. Yeah, snap in at the wings and they slide out of the fuselage. So it's very, very simple to do, very quick and easy to do. But that said, I don't think anybody, or I would say nobody, but I'll say very few people will be taking this apart to transport right. it. Well, even if you do guys, it's just one thumb screw requires no tools, yes. super simple. It's seconds, you're talking seconds, so. Very simple. So again, it's a 1.2 meter wingspan. So it's, it's a size that I'm sure uh, it sounds to some people like, oh, it's too small, but it's really not. It's got good, it's a good sized airplane. And what's nice about it, easy to transport, but you can also fly it in smaller spaces than you would fly right. a larger model. So uh, some guys, depending on your rules in your local area, might be able to fly us at a park, a soccer field. Uh, you'll be able to fly us at a place that's not just your typical flying field. Right. So that's what's really, really nice about having that, that kind of 1.2 meter span here. And again, you can see it's a, it's a good sized airplane. Uh, one thing I'll point out is that Otter Aircraft in particular uh, have a relatively high aspect ratio wing. So it's kind right. of a long, skinny wing. And a lot of times wingspan doesn't really tell the whole story. So I've seen a few people say, oh, hey, you know, this is not that much smaller than the EC-1500, but it's a lot less expensive. But guys, it's not a little bit smaller than the EC-1500. It's a lot smaller right. than no, the EC-1500. EC is pretty big, guys. Yeah, so I brought one today. We have one for reference. Yeah, we brought one here to show you we guys the, the difference. So, and it, it, again, it's, it's a pretty substantial difference between the two. Even though wingspan-wise, they're not that different, you guys can see the volume of an EC-1500 is far more substantial. It's a right. lot more wing area, a lot larger fuselage. Uh, one thing is also the power systems are far, far more capable. I think it's almost like four times the power. Absolutely. It's uh, got unlimited vertical and hovering capability on 4S, so on and so forth. Metal geared right. servos all the way around. It has a cargo door. That's why there's a pretty big difference in price. So right. again, it's kind of hard to see. Wingspan doesn't really tell the whole story. I think it's important for people to know kind of the overall volume of the aircraft. Also then, of course, the electronics. These are, you know, higher torque metal geared servos. They cost more. Again, the power systems, the motors, and the ESCs cost more. Right. Having the cargo door costs more. All of that kind of adds up. Plus, oh, you guys can see we got the optional skis. We're ready for some snow. Yes, we are. One of these days, we'll get the right amount of snow so we can actually get out and get some of that video footage on the, right. on the nice snow out there. So, wanted to point that out kind of from the get-go because I think some people, um, again, wanted it to be bigger. 
and don't quite understand the difference between it and the EC1500. And by the way, guys, the airplanes themselves, EC1500 and Twin Otter, are completely different animals. Yeah. Not only in size, but also kind of in purpose. The EC1500 is a semi-scale, kind of scale-looking airplane, but it's made so you can fly it slow and scale-like, but you can also do 3D aerobatics right. with it at the same time. Uh, and then everything in between. Of course, it has floats and skis. Uh, the Twin Otter is a scale airplane. And I, I think it's a good looking scale airplane. I think this, I love how it looks. And I love that we made the ski or the floats to the match floats, the yes. color scheme. It's really cool. Yeah, that's a nice touch. A lot of the full scales I've noticed, they do match usually the float trim scheme to the airplane trim scheme, which is not, it's not as common. A lot of times in the past, you would see uh, a full scale aircraft that had optional floats installed and they would just be silver or gray or, or whatever color. Right. Uh, and they didn't actually color match, but we chose a trim scheme here that is, it's more or less scale. Uh, it was inspired by um, a slightly different scheme but I think it looks great. I really like having the contrasting colors. Yep. You've got the blue on the bottom, which some people have said, hey, blue on the bottom is going to be hard to see. It's not hard to it's see, not. guys. It's, it's, it's a darker blue. The sky is not the dark, same dark blue color. It's got a bunch of white on top. It's got a lot of black accents as well. You can very, very, very easily tell. Even the, the top props bottom. are got a paint job, guys. Look at the props. Yeah, I like Super those. Super cool. Those look awesome. Not only when they're not spinning, but when they're spinning, they look really, really right. cool. Of course, we do have navigation lights, which you guys can see as well. So uh, yeah, a lot of notes there. Again, the size is important. We, we were hitting, trying to hit a size and a price point, uh, and then also to make it something you could fly in smaller spaces. Uh, and then on top of that, make it easy to transport. Right, right. Uh, I, I'd say a lot of people around this size, again, no problem without having to take it apart. You get a little bit bigger than this. And I know it sounds like a small difference, but going from like 1.1 meter to 1.2 meter, even 1.3 meter, that little bit of difference can make, make, difference. make it whether or not you have to take it apart. Right. So uh, we wanted to keep it kind of simple, kind of easy. What's nice is the uh, assembly out of the box, very simple. Yep. Not much to it. There are a few things that you might potentially have to glue, uh, like these. These, these vertical fins here, kind of a ventral, so to speak, on the uh, horizontal stab. You, you do have to glue those in if you want. Right. You could leave them unglued a little loose or use some double-sided tape on them. That's an option. Uh, some people have noted that sometimes the full-scale aircraft, when they don't have the floats installed, they don't have these, these fins. Uh, so it's up to you. You don't have to install them if you don't want to, but if you do install them, you can use a little bit of glue, a little bit of tape. Everything right. else bolts together, which is really, really nice. It goes yep. together in almost no time at all. So you guys can have this thing out of the box and into the air and uh, less time than it takes to charge your battery. Yeah, well, it depends on how fast <laughs> you're charging your battery, though. But probably give or take 30 minutes right. for very a lot simple. of people. So yeah. that is very simple. And, and again, guys, I think one of the nice things about this is we've got the tricycle landing gear in the box. We also include the matching floats, optional use floats. It does have a water rudder, which attaches to the nose gear steering. Yep. And so it does have a steerable water rudder, which is something that over the years, as I've flown more and more float equipped aircraft, uh, <sighs> If it's a little bit windy and you don't have a water rudder, especially if it's a relatively small airplane right. without a big, a big a rudder big itself, rudder. Yeah. it's hard to get that thing steering on the water. So having that water rudder is a really, really nice touch. Having it color matched to the airplane is a nice touch. You'll notice that it does have different strut attachments to the fuselage and all of that's included in the box and it does mount into different places uh, than the fixed gear does. Right. Yep. Yeah. So this, uh, I want to go into like something that we used to have in a while. So we used to have a Hangar 9 uh, Twin oh, Otter back right. in the day. Yes. So we do have like a, it's now considered a coveted aircraft. Oh, yeah, so it is. I wouldn't say that this is actually inspired from that, but there was a lot of demand for it. People really wanted that airplane. So we thought we'd definitely have a market to bring something like this back. So we're really excited to have this in our portfolio. Yeah, that Hangar 9 airplane, I remember it very vividly. Uh, when we first came out with it, a lot of people kind of balked at the price of it right. because it was a relatively large airplane. Sure. It was considerably larger than this. And to equip it with either glow engine or at the time, uh, pretty good power, electric power systems. It was not inexpensive to get that thing all together. I want right. to say it was probably north of $1,200 to put right. one together. And then to transport that, you had to take the wings off. It was quite a bit of work, quite a bit of connections and strut attachments and all those things. And so, uh, although back when it was originally out, it wasn't that popular per se, it's very coveted now because yeah. guys have missed it for many, many years. I want to say it's almost going on 10 years now since it's been out there. Um, and so a lot of guys try to find those on the used market, but that said at the same time, it's still not a model for everyone because right. of its size, because of its cost. And we're hoping that this can appeal to a much wider audience. Right. It's gonna fill that gap. And like, it's, it's got incredible value, comes with the floats. It's really yes. cool. You can fly, it's got 
lots of options. You can fly off water, you can fly off grass, mm -hmm. fly off your runway, asphalt. There's a lot of places that you can fly it and it's very affordable. Yeah, so for those that haven't seen it yet, be sure to go to the product page or go to our YouTube channel and check out the video that we posted yesterday when we announced it. You'll see it taking off and landing on pavement. You'll see it taking off and landing on some relatively thick grass, probably yeah. somewhat common grass. And so it does have enough power to do that. Of course, you'll see it flying off of the water with the floats. And uh, although, so the, the, uh, let me talk about this really quick. The full scale aircraft is considered stole in the world of aviation. Sure. It is short takeoff and landing capable, a lot more so than most aircraft its size in the full scale world. So the model scaled down has similar performance. That said, I don't call it stole like say a timber is, right. but it can take off and land in shorter distances in a lot of similar sized right. airplanes because of the overall plan form and shape of the airplane. We do also have flaps, has functional flaps. It comes with those out of the box and it's got very, very good power, more power than it needs. So you guys will see in the video, a very quick short takeoff. Uh, you'll see a nice long kind of smooth scale takeoff, um, but it has more than enough power to take off in short, relatively sure. short distances and land in relatively short distances. So while we're on the topic of performance, so this airplane, is it 3S only, 4S? What is it? Yes, I know the last, oh, almost oh, a little over a year now, we've been making most e-flight aircraft in this kind of category, uh, basically 3S and 4S compatible out of the box. That said, on this one, it's only 3S compatible. And we did that for a number of reasons. The first and foremost is to keep the cost down. So when you go to ESCs that are up to 4S capable, that then have to have a switching BEC, those cost more. You'd have to have a motor that can handle a lot more wattage. That motor then costs more. We would have had to increase the size of the airplane a little bit. So we decided to, um, to hit the right size and the right price point to go with just 3S capability out of the box, compatibility out of the box. And guys, it, it doesn't need more power. Yeah. It has more than scale power. It will already go relatively vertical. It doesn't have unlimited vertical. It doesn't need it to be fun. It's already pretty fast. It's already got more than enough thrust. And so 3S is perfect for it. And what's nice is we went ahead and sized it so you can use basically the most popular three cell batteries there are. Right. So originally we designed it around 1800 to 2200. And you guys might notice a couple people picked up on this. In the video it said 18 to 2200. Since then, getting the video done, we actually have flown it quite a bit more with a 3200. No problem. Yeah. It might end up a little bit nose heavy. Depends on your 3200 battery. So everybody's batteries weigh a little bit different. So there are heavier 3200s out there than others. Uh, we've been using the Spectrum Smart 3200, three cell 30C battery. Also the E-Flight 20C and 30C 3200, which a lot of guys have from say like the Apprentice aircraft and some other models. And so those batteries, they're, they're relatively lightweight in their class. And uh, although it's a little more nose heavy than with a 2200, it does fit in there and it does CG pretty well. Right. And it has really, really long flight times. Right. That's the nice thing about this airplane. If you do throttle back and fly it around scale-like most of the time, you're gonna get like 15 to 20 minutes on a 3200. Right. You're gonna get 10 to 15 minutes on a 2200. It's not uncommon for us to go out there and kind of fly a combination of aggressive aerobatics plus some smooth flying, some touch and goes, and to easily still get 10 minutes on a 2200. Right. So it's, I think, really good matched power systems for this model. Absolutely. Doesn't need 4S. Um, and again, 3S 3200, very, very popular battery. 2200, very, very popular battery. You could fly with an 1800. Heck, you could probably fly it on a 1300 if it's not too tail heavy. Absolutely. So just mind your CG, double check the weight and shape dimensions of the batteries that we recommend, the E-Flight batteries, and then also now the new Spectrum Smart batteries. Um, those are usually a little bit lighter than a lot of other brand and, and, and model of batteries that are out there. And so some of those batteries you might have more nose heavy. And nose heavy airplane, you can fly it. It maybe isn't as enjoyable to fly. So just mind your CG and uh, obviously double check um, the weight and shape of your batteries relative to the ones we recommend. So going forward, so the guys that are gonna buy this airplane, would you think they'd be the kind of guys that bought, say the Turbo Timber or any of the oh, Timbers yeah. for instance? I would say if you've enjoyed flying a Timber, you'll also enjoy, enjoy flying this. It's just an easy flying airplane. It's not hard to fly. It doesn't have any bad habits. Uh, it isn't, again, maybe quite as stole capable as those models, but at the same time, it'll take off in a short distance, land in a short distance. The handling is very good. Uh, the Binafly Basic version is, of course, equipped with AS3X and optionally use Safe Select. And AS3X keeps things smooth, even though it's somewhat small and relatively light. Even in a little bit of wind, it just takes, it's really locked in feeling. Right. So I still think that it'll appeal to those guys. Also, a person who maybe is just graduating from a training 
screener and maybe one other model, they can easily fly this airplane, especially the, the Bind and Fly basic version right. with AS3X and Safe Select. And then even as an experienced pilot, guys, this thing is a blast to fly. All the guys around the office that have been flying for a very, very long time have enjoyed flying this thing, even if it's just doing touch and goes. Yep. It just looks so good and it's so easy to fly and so smooth, everybody really appreciates it. Absolutely, so, absolutely. So yeah. what are we looking at from a cost perspective? So the Bind and Fly Basic version, which comes with obviously the power system's already installed, the servo's installed. It does also have the uh, AR636 receiver with AS3X and optional use safe select. That's $229.99. US dollars, so about $230 US, and then the bind, or sorry, the plug and play version, which is everything the same, power systems installed, servos installed, but no receiver, that version is $199.99. So just under $200 US, it is a, a great value, guys. And that includes floats, don't forget. That's right, yes. With the floats, guys, just like we do with the timbers, you're gonna get the floats with it, so you get a lot more options to yes. fly off multiple areas. A lot of value, and you guys can see, we got the navigation lights are in there, landing lights. It's got the flashing lights on the tips plus the navigation lights. It also has functional flaps. You guys will see that. So that is included in both the plug and play version, of course, and the Bind and Fly basic version. So I think we, were, we, we hit a really great solid price point with this model. It's a lot of aircraft for the money. Again, it's maybe not as big as some people would have liked, but that also helps keep the cost down right. and makes it accessible for a wider audience. So the biggest question of all, Mm -hmm. Will these make it for Christmas? So there is a shipment on the way to us now. I will tell you this. After we announced it yesterday, the response was overwhelmingly positive. Phenomenal. We are selling these fast in the pre-order phase right now. I, within the next day or two, we're gonna probably be sold out of that first shipment. So if you wanna get one before Christmas, you have to get your pre-order in right now. I'm telling you, if you're seeing this on YouTube later today or tomorrow, you may have already been too late. I'm hoping you guys see this now. And if you do see it on YouTube later on, get your pre-order in with either your local hobby shop, your favorite online retailer, or on our website, horizonhobby.com. Get that pre-order in so you can make sure to get one before Christmas. Uh, real quick on that, only the Bind and Fly Basic version is in the very first shipment. Uh, then the follow-up shipments have more Bind and Fly Basic and also the PMP version. So we have to split up the shipments um, in order to kind of get them out the door and to get them to our different warehouses. But again, if you want one before Christmas, you want any chance at one before Christmas, as soon as you see this, hit that pre-order button. You won't have to pay for it until, you sh until it ships. Uh, but again, I'd say, uh, at within two weeks or so of Christmas. So sometime in early January is when we'll get the rest of them. So if you do happen to miss Christmas, you're not gonna have to be waiting months. You just have to wait a couple more weeks. But either way, get your pre-order in now, get yourself in line, and then hopefully you'll get one before Christmas. Santa does have a limited supply. Santa does have a limited <laughs> supply. Yeah, yeah, very, very, That's very true. That's for sure. That is for sure. Yeah. So guys, I want to mention we are going to take some questions. So if there's any other questions you guys might have, go ahead and leave a comment here in the live video, and we will do our best to go ahead and answer that for you guys. Yeah, so uh, let's talk a little bit about um, what it comes with again out of the box. We obviously have the, the power systems are factory installed. You've got outrunner motors. They are counter-rotating. So you guys will see that uh, the props are counterclockwise and clockwise rotation, which helps make it easier to fly. So in right. the past, a lot of twin aircraft, before it was common to be able to get counter-rotating propellers, you would have both your propellers rotating the same way. And if you ever lost one motor, or even, well, it wasn't really losing one motor that was a problem. The issue was that with both motors going the same way, you obviously had a lot of extra torque in one direction. So right. you had to fight that a lot. Right. What's nice, when you fly a twin aircraft with counter-rotating props, it tracks almost straight as an arrow. Right. So when you punch it, throttle-wise, it doesn't veer one side or another, usually it just goes straight. And when you go vertical, and even if it starts to slow down, you'll notice it still kind of trucks straight up rather than falling off to one side or the other as it would with either same direction rotation props or if you have a single motor aircraft. Um, so that's a really nice touch. Absolutely. We do have the, the painted stripes on there, which I love the looks of here. I guess I could throttle up so everybody can see it. Ah, oh, yeah, those look cool. They're awesome. Love the way that looks. Don't look at it too long, it'll probably hypnotize you. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, also worth a note here, guys, that the ESCs are in a Y harness here. So uh, yes. if, if for some reason one did fail or if anything like that were to happen, you're not gonna have to bust out any soldering tools to replace them. They're plug and play right here in the wing and there's yes. just a small cover on the bottom. So super, super simple to replace parts on this model. You're not gonna have any confusion or issues there. Oh, and then let's also point out, because they're Y harnessed together, you just run the one battery. So one battery is powering both ESCs and motors. 
So that's kind of nice. You don't have to have any special connections or anything like that or any Y harnesses. So inside the aircraft, uh, in the battery compartment, it's wired into a single EC3 connector. And of course, the EC3 connector is compatible now with the IC3 connector yep. that's installed on the Spectrum Smart LiPos. So those will plug right in. Uh, obviously, if you have a different brand of, of connector that you're, is your preference, you can have an adapter. You can change the, uh, the connector that's on those leads. Right, but right. it's just simple plug and play, one connection and go. Uh, and I really like that because in the past, a lot of twins, you would have to either run two separate or batteries or have again a special different kind of Y harness and what's nice is again we set it up so if you do have to ever replace an ESC it's plug and play right you don't right. have to do any desoldering so to speak so we do have a gentleman Greg he wants to know what the top speed is ah so Greg wants to know the top speed of the aircraft uh, I don't know if we've actually put this one on the radar gun normally we don't put airplanes that are not necessarily speed demons it's on, not a hot on the radar, radar gun. that's for sure I, I guess I'd say maybe 60 miles per hour that's probably a good guess give or take yeah guess, so it's yeah. somewhere in that ballpark uh, and then obviously it's not intended to be flown all all the time at high speeds but right. some people that's how they fly and that's how they enjoy flying and it is capable of pretty good speed for its size and that'll cut through quite a bit of wind yep so i think that's kind of the nice thing about that oh, but at the same time guys it slows down very very nicely yeah so you can either throttle back even with the flaps up to blow half throttle and kind of cruise it around put the flaps down fly it around even slower it's very very well mannered at those low speeds that's the stall like flight characteristics yep right stall like there. flight characteristics yeah. exactly. so um we i don't think we covered how you actually install battery did we pull the hatch off? Uh, we it did is not. a top mounted yeah. battery install guys so very simple very easy yeah very very simple with it's got a magnet and that's it and you guys can see in the battery compartment there's quite a bit of room that said, again, as we mentioned earlier, you gotta be cautious of the size, shape, and weight of your battery. Right. So you gotta make sure that it does fit. The battery compartment's very wide here. There is a, a wall kind of here that has an opening in it. Now you could cut that opening a, a sure. little bit if you needed to. The recommended 2200 and 3200 milliamp batteries fit kind of right into that opening. Uh, but that's it, a lot of space inside there. Not much in there. It's very clean in the battery compartment. Um, the receiver is under the wing here. Right. So almost all the wire connections and everything are back here, and that keeps the battery compartment kind of nice, open, and clean. Yeah, and just to mention to reiterate, guys, if you're just now joining, it is a single thumb screw to remove the wing. There's no tools needed. Yep. You can take it off in just roughly a few seconds. That's it. Yep, just the one thumb screw there. You can take it off pretty quick and easy. And then as we mentioned earlier, there are struts here, but you guys will see, oh, I actually forgot to pop them in earlier because we had the wing off a minute ago. So you can pop them out and they just slide into the fuselage. So they're not necessarily functional, they're more aesthetic than anything else, but you can see I slide it in, snap it into place, and that's it. It's that simple, right? Uh, Greg, you asked if this is a park flyer. It is a park flyer if it's legal in your area. It can yes. be flown in a very small, confined area. I wouldn't necessarily call it a UMX, but it can be flown in a small right. area. We sized it so you could potentially fly it in a smaller space than a typical RC flying field, including a park or a soccer field, if you're an experienced enough pilot to keep it in that small of a space. And then on top of that, if it's allowed in your particular area. All those are important points. You got to make sure of that. All right. And Lucas wants to know what size of the props. I think they're five inch props, right? Oh, I'm not exactly sure the diameter of the prop. I, I haven't checked inches. that out, but uh, you can see it should be listed in the spare parts listing. You'll see the props there and the diameters listed. And sometimes the guys get hung up on diameter of prop. Guys, obviously we tuned the, the power system to these motors. So yeah, you could probably put slightly different size props on to affect the performance, but all of our flight testing, all of our power system durability testing was done with these props. So we wouldn't recommend changing them out. Plus these, these look great. Yeah, they look awesome. Awesome. They look great. They fit perfectly. <laughs> All right. Any Let's other see. questions? Wesley Miller, um, you asked if it's got one uh, one water rudder or two. It has one, which yes. is plenty. It's a small airplane. doesn't need a large one. You're also tied in with the rudder back here. It, it, you won't need two. One is plenty. Yep. Yeah, well, two would be obviously a little bit better, but then it would make the mechanics of the hookup a lot more complicated. Right. It also add, add some more weight, and it's definitely not necessary. So uh, real quick, we'll cover this because we typically get this question either during the live or after the fact. Can this be a first airplane? And the answer is no. Although it's relatively easy to fly, this is not a beginner's airplane. This is not a trainer airplane. Right. However, it is a perfect first twin powered airplane. So if you've never flown a twin, and I'm surprised I actually meet a lot of guys that have been flying for 20 and 30 years that have never flown a twin aircraft, sure. in part because 20 years ago, electrics still weren't that common and weren't really that practical yet. And so back then you had to fly with two glow engines or two gas engines, and it wasn't uncommon to have one die and then to end, a, end up in an engine out situation, which is very difficult to then fly the airplane successfully. Right. So uh, that said, perfect first twin. If you have flown a trainer successfully, especially one of our larger trainers like the Apprentice, Apprentice STS, uh, our Carbon Cub S Plus, you could potentially fly this as your second airplane 
airplane, especially if you buy the bind and fly basic version and do bind it with safe select active, right. then uh, it could be a second airplane. That said, I would still probably recommend it as a third airplane. Sure. So I would say fly your trainer, master that, maybe move into something a little bit higher performance, like let's say a timber or something like that has a little more power, a little bit more control than your trainer, and then you can jump right into this as your next airplane. Right. So I think that would be a good progression. But that said, pretty much anybody that's flown a couple of airplanes, and even if you've flown hundreds of airplanes, you can fly this airplane, you're gonna enjoy flying this airplane. Yes. Absolutely, guys. Well, yeah. just I'm not seeing any of the comments in here. Guys, so again, you guys if, you, again if you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments. We're gonna monitor the comments before or during the live and after the live. Um, so if there's anything that you guys have specific, you know, that you wanna know, just let us know and we'll be here to watch that for you guys. Yeah, some of the things you guys, if you look closer at some of the photos that we've posted, there are some uh, extra surface details on this, even though it's somewhat smaller of an aircraft and we can't put as many details on it as some of our larger scale models. We do have corrugated surfaces. We do have some panel lines and hatch lines and door outlines molded in. So it does have a fair bit of detail more so than like an ultra micro would have, right. uh, but maybe not as much as some of our, again, larger now EDF jets or some of our larger scale, um, this Carbon Z Cubs, sure. you know, that kind of thing. So it uh, does have a good number of scale details. Again, for those just tuning in, it does come with the tricycle landing gear and it does include the floats in the box. Of course, the floats are optional use. Um, we did talk about it's available in a bind and fly basic version and also a plug and play version. Oh, and real quick on the bind and fly basic version, we mentioned it has AS3X, which is always active, and it does have optional use safe select. So you don't have to use safe select if you don't want to. If you don't, it's just a five channel aircraft. If you want to use safe select, you need to have a six channel transmitter. And that's because channel six technically would be your flaps. Channel five, you could use that. You could assign it to any switch to turn safe select on and off. And so for those that are not familiar, your AS3X, which is always active, are three axis gyros that just smooth things out. So if it's right. a little bit windy and gusty, instead of the plane bouncing around and making you work a lot to keep it smooth, that is kind of doing it for you. When right. you move the stick, you're in command. You take over. So they don't get in your way. They don't keep you from doing any aerobatics or inverted flying or anything like that. And this is capable of all those aerobatics. But when you turn on safe select, you then have pitch angle limits and bank angle limits. So you can't get the airplane upside down and crash. And if you let go of the stick, it goes right back to level. Right. So safe select is great if you're a less experienced pilot. Uh, if you're maybe if you do something like you fly through the sun, you lose orientation, you can flip on safe to select to save you. Or sometimes even more experienced guys will cheat a little bit if it's a really bad crosswind. Turn on safe select, it keeps the wings level for you, makes your landings really easy. So taking off and landing with safe select is almost like a almost a no-brainer. You right. still have to steer it, get it to you know the right point on the wherever you're gonna land. Right. Uh, but that is nice that you have that. Oh, real quick, the Binafly basic version does include the Spectrum AR636 receiver. And I've already seen a couple guys say, well, why didn't you guys put in the new 637 receiver or also then the Smart ESCs? And so Smart is great, guys. Phenomenal technology. It's gonna make everything a lot better down the road. That said, it does cost a little bit more. 636 is a little more a little less expensive than the 637. And also the Smart ESCs cost a little bit more. And sure. we were really trying to keep that, you know, really good value on this aircraft. Um, and and although SMART gives you some additional telemetry data, that would be beneficial. Um, again, I think in this case, we kind of balanced out that, right. that price to technology and performance ratio right. to come up with what we got. And I think a lot of guys are really happy with the, the price and everything that's included in the box. Right. And in the future, we will have aircraft that come with a 637 receiver, come with a SMART ESC, but they won't be, it won't be every aircraft. And again, the reason for that is because certain aircraft benefit more from having that extra telemetry data and those extra capabilities, but then at the same time, there is a cost involved in, in adding those features. Sure. So I think well, this doesn't have it and that makes sense. Well, I mean, also you gotta think about lead time and development guys too. I mean, it's what, a year to yeah. start and finish a project. So the smart stuff is recently new. So yes. when this was actually in the developmental phase, we didn't actually have smart ready for it. That's exactly. also another point to make. So going forward, there will be a lot of smart incorporated in a lot of the e-flight aircraft. Yes. As Jason had mentioned, not all of them, but it will be something that you guys will have to take advantage of. Exactly, and I think it's something, I'm glad to see guys pick up on that though, to say, oh, I'm surprised to see an airplane not having it now that you guys have announced it, but Cody makes a perfect point. This airplane's been in development for almost two years now, and then by the time we kind of locked in the design and the power system choices and the receiver choice, and you, all that stuff is long lead. You know, it right. takes many months to get a factory to produce receivers and ESCs, and so you can't just change it at the last minute. Right. 
you have to plan all this stuff out many, many, many months in advance. Doesn't Probably take like a week to make an airplane. <laughs> no, <for> sure. no. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's an interesting point. Maybe not a lot of guys have seen our other videos and they may not realize this, but most of our projects go from idea to in the market in a roughly 18 to 24 month time frame. You can be a little bit faster than that. Sometimes they take a little longer than that, depending on how complex they are and how many changes they go on. But average is, again, that year and a half to two years from idea to finished product. So we've been working on this one for a long time, as we do for a lot of our models. We've been really excited about it for a long time. I've been looking forward to it myself because I really liked that Hangar 9 Otter. It was an amazing airplane. Um, again, I, I didn't pick one up myself and I regret it. I kick myself all the time for not. Uh, now I can have an Otter. And what's nice is I can also have uh, the ability to fly it off of uh, on floats, of course, and then off of grass and pay fields as well. So, and it's also very perfect. affordable. Oh, it's very, very affordable. affordable compared to the Hangar 9 one. Not that the Hangar 9 or balls is bad, but it's also oh, yeah. a larger aircraft, requires a lot of building, a lot of time to, to get going. This is ready to go out of the box. Yes. Comes with the floats. It fills a gap. If you guys are coming from the stall aircraft scene and you have a timber, this is basically a timber with another motor. It flies really cool. Yes. You guys will really enjoy this airplane. Yes, it is very much like a timber. Right. It's along those lines more than anything else. Again, a little bit less stall capable, per, but, but still, will take off and land in shorter distances, is easy to fly, well-mannered. It's a good plan form overall. Uh, I think, you know, some people are kind of torn on the looks of otters in the full-scale world. And there are different shapes of noses. You, you guys might notice that um, for different models and different variations. We went kind of with the long nose version because we all right. thought it looked a little more modern. A little bit more. And that's personal preference, of course. Just like trim schemes are personal preference. I saw a couple guys point out, oh, I wish they had done this crazy trim scheme, or I wish they had done the yellow trim scheme, or it's this one. Red, too. There's a lot of really <laughs> great trim schemes. So I would not be surprised if we see a lot of these repainted. Yeah. I will not be surprised by that. And guys, if you do happen to repaint one, you know, get some graphics from Cali, please send us a photo so we can share with everybody as inspiration for what you can do. That said, I like this trim scheme. I, you know, everybody has a personal preference. I've always really liked some of these kind of more modern-esque schemes where they go with some, some kind of swoop lines and some extra paint kind of on the belly and up on the vertical here. It looks really, really good out of the box. The matching flows is what does it for me. I love the matching floats. Yeah, you're it's so pretty. I think we're gonna see him out at the flying field with floats on it all the time. You're gonna, <laughs> I'll hand launch or something, we'll figure it out. It'll take off of wet grass. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I'll have to wait for a rainy grass. day. <laughs> yeah, so I think we covered pretty much everything, guys. Uh, again, for those that might've missed that part about availability, you can pre-order right now. If you pre-order right now, you have a good chance of getting a Bind and Fly Basic version before Christmas. There is a shipment on the way to us now. It's selling faster than we expected. We knew this was gonna be popular, guys, but I think we were a little bit overwhelmed by the response so yeah. far. Uh, the orders were coming in a lot faster yesterday than usual for some new releases. That usually indicates it's very, very popular. Uh, and so that said, get your pre-order in now. It's your favorite local hobby shop, your favorite online retailer, or horizonhobby.com. Yep. If you put your pre-order in now, you have a good chance of getting one before Christmas. If you miss that, it's okay. There's more shipments already getting ready to leave or already on the way of Bind and Fly Basic and Plug and Play versions. Yep. Those follow-up shipments will be around the... Possibly end of December, January. more like early yeah. January is probably when they'll come in. So just a little after Christmas, um, but not long after. And so again, I'm really excited that this was our last new release of the year on the aircraft side of things for E-Flight in particular. Uh, I think it's, we're going out with a bang. Yeah, we I are. I think this one is gonna do very, very well. I'm gonna see a lot of these, I'm pretty sure, at the flying fields next year. Yeah, absolutely, I would agree. Absolutely. All right, guys, well, make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video. We really appreciate it. And again, if you have any other uh, comments that you, you or any questions about the aircraft, leave them in the comments. We'll get back to you. Thanks for being here, guys. Thank you.